there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is the Cook Along Podcast. I have a guest chef with me today. My son, Horatio, is interested in sharing some things that he learned about the kitchen since he left my house, and he makes a different kind of pot pie than I do. On the cookalongpodcast.com website, you will find my chicken pot pie. It's called Cindy's Chicken Pot Pie. You'll find it in your podcast feed. It's really yummy, and I love that pie, and I very much encourage you to try it. However, Horatio is in the mood to make a vegetarian pot pie, which I've never done. I know that you kind of leaned toward vegetarian when you were attending Green Mountain College. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So so why did that happen? Because you certainly were not a vegetarian when you left (laughs) my house. Well, it was a college that really focused a lot on sustainability and your impact on the world. And so uh, we were learning a lot of things about how our food is impacting the economy and the ecology and everything else about our world. And we decided that at the time... It was, for one thing, very expensive to ah, do a lot of meat. And, good point. And for a, Starving college kids. Yeah. Yes. And, and for another, we just didn't like supporting some of the industries that involve using a lot of meat. And even now, while I have incorporated meat back into my diet for the most part, I still personally do not eat beef for mostly ecological reasons. But I don't need to go into all that right now. So did you find, do you find, that when you're cooking with vegetarian, you have trouble with bringing enough umami into Mm. the flavors? What I've discovered when eating and cooking vegetarian, and actually for a while we went vegan as well, so certain challenges come to you, including flavor, but you also discover that there have been people who don't eat meat or not eating specific kinds of meat for like forever yeah there's plenty of people out there who have never had meat and they are enjoying their meals just fine and as a matter of fact while i was visiting home during college i went to one of my favorite restaurants and i realized that what i usually would get there was a meat dish so i started looking at all the vegetarian options they had and they had an eggplant masala it was a Moroccan restaurant. They had this eggplant masala, and I was like, oh, I'll give that a try. And it is still, to this day, my absolute favorite thing on their menu. They make very good meat dishes. But that eggplant masala is like, what if you made lasagna, but you replaced the noodles with eggplant, and <laughs> then somehow made the eggplant amazingly delicious? It almost sounds like a natural combo. Eggplants with masala seem like they would go well together. They do. So it's possible to not only get some of the flavor you're looking for from meat in other ways, but you can actually find that there are things that meat can detract from simply because it becomes the focus of the dish. Oh, see, I hadn't thought about that. So do you find that you add more seasonings when you cook? Or or, I don't know, is that a silly question? When I cook a meal that doesn't have meat in it, I am looking for something to fill that gap flavor-wise in some way. That usually means that I'm going to be considering a little bit more of the fat that's going in because you're not getting any fat from the meat. Of course, if you're using really lean meat, that might not be a big consideration. But also looking at seasonings, and the recipe I've brought is actually kind of light in its seasonings, and I usually like to improvise a bit with the seasonings that I add to things based on what I've got. The nice thing about pot pie is it's something that you can take certain leftovers and work with if you already have a oh, bunch you need of to vegetables. Put inside the pie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or if you just have a bag of frozen whatever, vegetable wise in the freezer, you just can figure out what's gonna work well and what's not. I put all kinds of different frozen vegetable mixes into a pot pie and some things work better than others, that's for sure. Um not sure how I feel about lima beans. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but uh, I think that even if you aren't vegetarian, challenging yourself to eat or cook vegetarian or vegan, for that matter, will lead you to new flavor discoveries. Like like you said in your podcast about chicken sausage. 
Oh, yeah, the Italian chicken sausage. The Italian chicken sausage. Mm -hmm. You were looking for a replacement for beef because I don't eat beef. Mm -hmm. And you found... That's right, it was your fault. Yeah, it was my fault. So when I was talking about my Italian chicken sausage, this is the culprit. Yeah, (laughs) in that episode, you mentioned that you prefer now this chicken sausage, and you can't even find it anymore. So now, instead of going back to beef, you're still making your own version. Yep. I really appreciated the HET podcast because you explore when you put certain limitations on yourself that maybe you don't need to, you get to explore some new space that you've been ignoring because you didn't need it. Cool. My mother used to say necessity is the mother of invention. If you are of necessity leaving out meat, you have to get creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about this recipe a little bit. I'm going to talk about the equipment and I'm going to let you talk about the ingredients. Sure. Um, and I have some ideas, actually, that as you go through, I'm going to ask you about. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do these a little backwards. Usually, I would give you the ingredient list, and then I would give you the do heads and the equipment. But I'm going to talk first because I'm the mom. Okay, so I get to go first. <laughs> so you're going to need a 9-inch pie pan. And my understanding is the deeper, the better. So a little shallow pie pan probably isn't going to cut it unless you make more than one. You're going to need a large saucepan and then a whisk to stir things with. And then to keep your pie crust from burning, you're probably going to either want some aluminum foil or one of those pie tin guard things. I have one here. It's called it's called a pie crust shield. That's right. I knew that. It just sits over the top so you don't have to mess with the foil. But foil is perfectly fine and all it does is keep your edges from getting too brown. And if you don't care about that, then you don't even need the foil. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 425, and you're going to want a pie crust. And we're not going to do that as part of this recipe today, because you can find the pie crust that we're going to do in your podcast feed or on the cookalongpodcast.com. It's called Cindy's Favorite Pie Crust. My it's favorite, a, too. It's super easy to make. So you can go there, start there. One thing, if I can step in Yes, for a please second. do. When making the pie crust, the recipe calls for vegetable oil. I'm going to recommend olive oil for this particular instance of using this pie crust. Light olive oil that doesn't have flavor or olive oil? No, I'm, I'm talking about throwing some flavor in there, baby. Okay. okay. And the heat's not a problem. Olive oil's got a low smoke point, but that doesn't have any issue when you're making the pie? No. This pie crust is a little more on the crumbly side, but... Okay. Well, that's all right. I like that. Yeah. By the way, yes, there is some place you can go look about the smoke point of various oils. I have a blog on the website. You'll find it if you type cooking oils into the search bar. And it just is a chart that shows all the different cooking oils and what point they smoke at in terms of temperature and the different ways you can use them and when you should and when you shouldn't. All right. Do you want to talk about the ingredients? Uh, Sure. We're going to be using two tablespoons of butter or margarine. You're welcome to try and make this vegan. I made this a vegan pot pie before. So two tablespoons of butter or margarine. You can even make do with more olive oil. I've done it that way before. Oh, really? Yeah. Two tablespoons of flour. One teaspoon of salt. If you're including potatoes, which we probably will be today, you might want a little bit more than that, but it depends on your potatoes. Question about the salt. Do you have a preference for kosher salt or sea salt? or? I avoid table salt, yes. but otherwise I tend to use kosher. Okay. And, yes, indeed, there is a blog on the website <laughs> called Kosher Sea or Table, I think. It's about salt. You type in salt in the search bar, you'll find it. Back to this, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Your choice of pepper, fresh ground or whatever. One eighth of a teaspoon of thyme, and this is important, and I recommend powdered thyme if possible. It's probably not worth the effort to grind it yourself, okay. but I, if you have ground thyme, that's the one to use. Uh, half a cup of broth of some sort. Today, since we're making a vegetarian version, I'm going to be using a sautéed onion bouillon made by Better Than Bouillon. My partner and I really love this stuff. It works really well. Do you dilute it or something? Do you uh, dissolve it in You something? dissolve it in water, okay. although since it's Didn't it's it similar to a paste, but it's goopier than that. Oh, okay. And so unlike a bullion cube or something, you, you have a little more control of how much mm-hmm. you use, so you're 
welcome to add more at some point if oh, we need to. It smells good. Yeah, doesn't it? So would we want to put it in vegetable broth or just in water? I usually just do water. Okay. In fact, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to we'll okay. get to the thing. Yes. Um, and then half cup of light cream is what the recipe that I'm using calls for. This is a Betty Crocker chicken dinner pie recipe that's been modified, by the way. And I don't have any light cream because light is not what I do. I have some whole milk and I have some heavy cream. Mm. And I know that if you had to, you could also use evaporated milk if you have only canned milk in the house. That'll work as well. Yes. So um, we're going to use a heavy cream today, is that right? Yes, we're okay. going to go for a heavy cream. I would say also that if you're making this vegan, you could go for something like a cashew milk would probably work just fine. I've used rice milk before, but the thing about rice milk is you want to use extra. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know why, but especially with baking, I've noticed rice milk takes extra. And I used pea milk once in my chicken pot pie. In fact, I I think I may have done that for the podcast even. And it was really good. It didn't add a lot of flavor. It was nice and thick. It kept the gravy from being really runny, which some people really like their gravy to kind of ooze. And this made it much thicker than that. But pea milk is an option as well, I know, because I've tried it. Wonderful. Uh, we'll use the heavy cream today. You can also throw in, if you want to make this a non-vegetarian, uh, you could do two cups cubed cooked chicken or turkey, if that's your thing. Uh, not what we're doing today. You also want one pound of peas and carrots or one package, you know, 10 ounces, say, of frozen peas and carrots cooked and drained. I'll be honest, we're not going to cook and drain those in advance. Okay, cool. As long as they have been pre-cooked, so to speak, and before being frozen, which right. will be fine. Yeah. Well, they have to, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So we also can recommend whatever vegetable medley, like I was saying before, you want to throw in there. I'm also going to add in some celery that I brought. I'm going to chop that up and throw that in because it's surprisingly good flavor. I don't otherwise much care for celery. But, <laughs> but uh, it uh, it does something when you put it in pot pie and a few other things. And then the recipe also calls for one can of small whole onions, which we are actually going to be using pearl onions. We're using frozen ones again. And again, I'm not going to worry about defrosting them in advance just a tiny comment. I don't remember ever seeing canned small whole onions, and maybe they have them, or maybe this is charred. because this is Betty Crocker from 1965 or something, probably. That's a good uh, point. Actually, this edition was a 1970s edition, I think. You gave... Oh, I gave you one, too. All right, because I really like potatoes, and because we grew our own potatoes this year, I dug up all my potatoes. They've all been harvested for the year. And some of them are the size of peas. And some of them are the size of mini marshmallows, maybe. And <laughs> I just thought, since we have them, and it would be tricky to find other things to do with them, that we're going to put those in. So they're Yukon Gold Potatoes. Goodness, this one really is the size of a miniature marshmallow. They're that really is wild. tiny. You could just use regular potatoes if you like potatoes. I mean, to me, that's the most important ingredient in the pot pie is the potatoes. But Horatio says they often don't use them. They don't really care whether they're in there or not. Well, it's about the cook time because we're using frozen vegetables. Right. They're already cooked. So you don't want to spend a bunch of time cooking potatoes. Well, I could mic those. We could just yeah. put them in the microwave real quick. Yeah, good. these are so small, they'll cook. they'll really. cook so fast. Yeah. The other thing I just wonder, I happen to have a tiny bit of leftover cauliflower and a tiny bit of broccoli. Are you interested in uh, those? I think we're going to pass on those. The thing I've found about broccoli is that it's easy to get into funky territory with it in a pot pie, where it gets that kind of, oh, what is it? Cabbage? <laughs> yeah, kind of cabbage, the cabbage flavor. Of yeah, family, right? yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not something we're looking for in this pot pie. All right. And cauliflower, I think, would be fine, but my partner has asked that we not do cauliflower. So. Okay, there you go. End of discussion. <laughs> all right. So that's all the stuff you need to know before we start cooking. Horatio and I are going to go away now and deal with making the crust. We're just going to have it ready to go. My guess would be, Horatio, correct me if I'm wrong, that we are going to make a two-crust pie, mm -hmm. and we're going to divide it, not quite in half, but 
maybe two thirds of the crust goes in the bottom of the pie plate. We're going to roll it out and put it in there and then roll out the second crust and leave it to sit until we're ready for it, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So go find Cindy's favorite pie crust, replace the vegetable oil with olive oil, and when you have that all ready to go, come on back here and Rachel will guide us through making the innards. All right, we're back. We have the pie crust now. It smells really different than my pie crust because you can really notice the olive oil smell in it. And we're talking about ingredients. So we're back to the thyme. And what I have is just regular leaves, dried thyme leaves. And because Horatio really prefers ground thyme, I'm going to do a mortar and pestle thing and grind it up a little bit or powder it up a little bit. And, and then Horatio asked about garlic. Mm, yes, I did. I was saying that one of the things you can throw into take a meat pie and make it vegetarian and still keep a good amount of flavors, you throw in garlic. I realized that you have some fresh garlic ready to go always. Right, always. So figured that would be great. Okay, seems like it'd be a little strong, but maybe that's a good thing in a vegetarian pie. You want some of that umami, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> So we're going to just mince it. You just want it minced, which means I can use my pressure thingy, right? You sure can. Go right ahead. Right. Sorry about the noise. I'm into a drawer. Okay, I'm going to crush garlic, and I'm going to crush thyme, and the Horatio's going to start cooking here. So you go ahead and talk, and if I have questions, I will nod in, okay? Oh, and then I'm going to roll out the top crust. We didn't roll out the top crust yet. We just got the one for the bottom of the pie. So I guess I'm sort of sous chefing here. I have no objections to that. Yeah. So I'm currently, I've got a, uh, it's called for a large saucepan, and I think this would qualify, probably. Yeah, I would call that a stew pot. I prefer this kind of pot for this, especially if I'm doing it with meat, because I find that, quite frankly, this makes a lot of filling. As a matter of fact... Are we going to have leftover filling? We might. I've had leftover filling before. Depends on your pie crust and pie tin sometimes. What do you do with the leftover filling? If I have enough extra pie crust and it's the pie tin that's the problem, I might make like a little mini one. That's kind of fun sometimes. Yeah. Otherwise... Eat it like a stew Like a something? stew, yeah. Okay. It doesn't get quite the same flavor as it does from baking. All right, so I'm currently melting the butter. I have some salted butter. Two tablespoons of that in the large pan over low heat. I'm just letting that get nice and liquidy. It's taking its time. Time's coming. I'm grinding it up. It's just this tiny little bit. This eighth of a teaspoon. I told you you don't have to do that. Well, no, I want to do it right. Okay. Well. Besides, I never get to use this. <laughs> your mortar and pestle? Yeah. Well, um, I'm glad that I can give you an opportunity. So uh, while that's melting, I can start planning out my seasonings here. As I spoke of before, salt is going to be important, as well as pepper and thyme. And probably, you know, here's a little trick. I've already measured out my flour into a little mini bowl here. And because I'm waiting for the butter to melt, but this all is going to go in at the same time, I like to just throw the salt and pepper and thyme in with the flour so that I just dump it all in in one go and I don't have to dirty more dishes and it smells good. Okay. That was the time we were talking about. What's that? Performing right. in an audio-only medium? Yeah, that's right. Takes a little getting used to. Oh, and your celery here. Now, my partner made sure to point out that if you're using a significant number of potatoes, you want extra salt, so keep that in mind. These tiny potatoes, I actually don't think are going to have that big an impact on our salt content, but potatoes, they like to soak up salt. We've talked about that before in, like, how to take care of too much salt in something, right? Not really. I don't remember that I actually have, and there are a number of ways to do it, and I know that potatoes are infamous for being one of them, but I haven't really talked about it. Do you uh, want the garlic now, too, or is that different? Oh, yeah. Not this second. All right, so it's here when you're ready. So uh, I've got the salt. The one teaspoon of salt has been put in my little thing of flour. It doesn't have to get mixed in. So is the thyme. The thyme is in there. That's an eighth of a teaspoon of that. And I'm getting the eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. And here, since my butter is still melting, it's taking its time. Maybe you need to turn up the stove. 
Well, it says... Well, because you have it on, like, one. Well, it says to do it low. Well, I know, but... I'm in no rush on the butter. Well... But I'm going to take a look at these seasonings. Okay. Right? And this is where I like to improvise a little bit. In this instance... Now we're cooking in my kitchen, just to be clear, rather than Horatio's kitchen, because Horatio's is very, very tiny. So what he has right now is access to my cabinet full of mm. spices. Things I couldn't prepare for, but can definitely take advantage of. Yeah, there's a lot. Ooh, some paprika would be great. Smoked paprika? Yes, please. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. By a little bit, I just mean maybe somewhere around an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay. I'll throw that in there. But this could be anything, right? Oh, Anybody's yeah. taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you know generally what goes well with the vegetables you're using. This, this is the artistic, time. creative part. Do what you want. Yeah. Let's see here. Can I smell some things real quick? Yeah. Tell them what you're smelling. I just smelled some cumin. Seems like a good bet. That was yeah. the first thing that came into my head. I just apparently I just did a half teaspoon of that. That might be a bit much. <laughs> well, but uh, well, no. Fine. Oh, and you know what? How about some coriander? Okay, so coriander, cumin, and what was the third thing? I also used some smoked paprika. Oh, smoked paprika. That's right. And the thyme. Yeah. Careful with coriander. That's what makes the gravy grander. I have not heard that. What is that again? <laughs> yes, you have because it's from Sweeney Todd. Oh. Careful with the coriander. That's what makes the gravy grander. More hot pie. Oh my gosh. I don't I don't think I knew that that's what they were saying. More hot, more pie. <laughs> oh, funny. Yes, well, we're not using any kind of meat today, so. Just as well. With that <laughs> reference, yes. <laughs> Vegetarian is the way to go. So, can you tell that we're related yet? <laughs> All right, so my butter is melted. So I'm going to go ahead and take my flour plus everything else. Oh, you know what? Actually, since I'm doing the raw garlic, I'm going to throw that in first. I'm going to turn up the heat a bit, and I'm going to get the garlic browning a bit. Wanna, there's some stuff about garlic. I'm going to just remind everybody that if you put it in early, you're going to get a milder flavor. Well, there's several things. The smaller you cut it, the stronger the flavor. The later you add it to your recipe, also the stronger your flavor. So if you want it to kind of mellow out and sweeten, you want to put it in early. And if you want it to really just jump out and grab people, you want to save it till the end. And of course, there's all the middle ground in between. I like to get it a little bit sweet. Again, as you talked about some of that umami flavor we look for, but we want other flavor profiles in here as well. So I'm just going to let it cook in there for a bit. You know, something else I've done is at times I have thrown the bullion in since it's this goopy stuff yeah either in with this or i've mixed it together with my if i have a limited number of measuring things i will mix my water bullion and cream together in one big thing so that i can pour it in all at once since it usually goes in all at the same time anyway so i should say i have adhd and that means that I take shortcuts sometimes that maybe other people, professional chefs especially, would not take. It also means that I tend to make a bit of a mess in the kitchen. Well, they learned that from me, too. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> All right, this garlic is starting to run up. So uh, I'm adding in the flour and various spices. Do note that if you add too much in the way of spices, your roux, which is what we're basically making right now, will get a little too thick because you'll just have too much dry for the amount of butter. The important thing is to try and keep your fat to about the same amount as your flour. So, so Is that the flour only or the flour plus the dry ingredients? Flour plus dry ingredients, okay. basically. So right now I've got basically two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of butter and some extra spices and whatnot. But I was also a little bit generous in when I cut the butter in terms of what I considered to be two tablespoons. What I love about a roux is that once I learned that that's what I was making when I was making pot pie, I learned to make, I learned to make this pot pie, and then I learned that I was making a roux. Is how great it is for thickening anything. Yeah. Anytime you see something that's like, oh, and then add flour to thicken it, you could have started with a roux. You probably should have. What I love about roux actually is kind of that it's a magic combination i mean you've got fat flour and a liquid 
and that's gravy, and that's pie crust. Maybe that's what we did with the pie crust a little while ago. You can do so many things with just those three ingredients, and I love that this one makes a sauce. Yes. Oh, I see. So you got kind of golden brown on the flour and spices as well. I mm-hmm, can certainly mm-hmm. smell it. Yeah. And so okay. now, now that we have this roux going, we're going to take this off the heat. If you prefer to stir with a whisk, that works really well for this. Uh, once we've got it nice and browned up, it's been bubbling for at least, usually they say you want your roux to bubble for at least a minute, but uh, you don't want to burn it either. And that was going pretty high. So I made you turn it up. I'm sorry. That yeah, was my well, fault. Uh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be just fine. So now we're going to add in the broth and cream. So tell me what to do here. I've got the bouillon stuff. Yes. So this better than bouillon. One teaspoon okay. is what equals one cube of bouillon, which is what we would normally use. So you want a whole teaspoon. Per half cup. And how much water do we need? For broth, broth. it would be a half, half cup. Half cup of broth. Yeah. So don't, a teaspoon. Yeah. And go ahead and don't be afraid to be a little generous. Okay. And then I'm going to add half a cup of water to this. And then I'm going to add the heavy cream to it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it won't all fit in there because we're... Oh, it won't? Uh, Actually, it will. Oh, yeah, it will. So are you ready for that, like, right now? Sure. Okay. I often will double this recipe and make two pot pies. You mean Uh, the whole thing or just the filling? The filling and, well, the crust, I'll double those two. Wow. Um, Because it's good. And you can feed a lot of people with a good pot pie, and you still have leftovers that way. And it's a really easy recipe to double. This one I probably should have used warm water. Yeah. I didn't anticipate that it would not just dissolve because it's so liquidy. It's kind of like it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's it's not the end of the world. You know, we recently found out about this onion jam that we've been using, but we don't use it like jam. We use it like addition to bullion. You mean real jam. You yeah. mean jam. Onions. It's basically just sautéed onions. Is maybe it some, sweet? Uh, a little, but the way that sautéed onions get sweet. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the bouillon or the broth, whatever you're using, and the cream into the pot. You may hear some sizzling depending on how hot your pot is. Make sure you get all that stuff out of here. And then we're going to make it boil. Over the years, you have lived in the smallest kitchens I have ever seen. Oh, and boy. I am a little surprised that you ended up cooking at all. I mean, there was a point where you ended up, what was it, 425 square feet? Not or, even. No, it was less than that? It was less than that. It was an old hotel that they turned into an apartment building, but there were certain regulations they had to follow. And so they were like, well, this room's big enough to technically be an apartment if we add in, you know. But that one was so small. You had to have it was. You had to have bunk beds because there was just one room. Yeah. Teeny, teeny, tiny stove. And then there was a separate bathroom, yeah. but the, there was no separate bedroom. It was just one room. No, as a matter of fact, the bathroom is required to have its own sink. But uh, the bathroom wasn't big enough for the sink, so the bathroom sink was right outside of the bathroom. And was larger than the kitchen sink. Oh, but you actually had two sinks. We had two sinks in the same room (laughs) because of that. And that place, it was below 400 square feet. I remember that much. I don't remember the exact, but it was absurdly small. We only lasted there about 10 months. Couldn't live there. Just really small. We got this. We had a convection oven similar to the one you've got. I think maybe you got it for us. Got a bunch of stuff that would fit in a small apartment we had collapsible bowls and oh smart yeah uh, the place only came with a mini fridge and <laughs> when you said that you know you had a small stove it was a two burner stove top and there was no oven attached to it it was just a counter that had a electric stove top built into it all right currently i'm stirring the cream and broth and roux together this is a great time to use a whisk if you are worried about it, but this seems to be coming together just fine with a rubber spatula right now. You actually have that up on high. I do. I'm just trying to get it boiling. Well, that's impressive. That's Oh, now, okay, so... Yeah, I've got plenty of heat, though, there. So. He just turned it down to low, so... I don't know. I didn't mean to scare you out of no, high. No, 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 no. Like I said, I've probably been talking... I'm not timing this. The ADHD means that I'm terrible at noting when I start things and then needing to know how long it's That's been okay. Going. You know, they can tell by when it's boiling, right? And well, it needs to boil for a minute. Oh, 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 I don't know. I didn't check it either. Yeah, but yes, we're probably there. And this is the point where we're going to throw in the vegetables. Now, this is also where you would add the meat if you had it. But we're assuming it was pre-cooked. 
assuming it was pre-cooked. Right. But we're also assuming that these are cooked vegetables. And, uh, well, they are, but not frozen. Now but you're we're using the whole bag of the pearl onions. Yeah, the birds I just like threw that right onions. in. I like my pearl onions. I'm this. sorry about all the package noises, but that's what happens when you open packages. <laughs> so. And these carrots are going in. So you got a 12-ounce bag. The whole thing's going in. Now, do you want this one, too? Because there's probably mm-hmm. eight here. Well, let me stir it around. I remember we got the potatoes, although there aren't very many of them. Oh, okay, those should go in now. We can get everything nice and coated here. Okay. You say not to use this sponge? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is looks like it's going to fit just fine inside that. So, uh, can you put spinach or anything in it? Um, I would consider spinach when we were talking about what kind of flavor we would like and decided against it. We talked about a lot of different vegetables. It um, smells good. Oh, dang it. What'd you forget? In classic, our family style, I okay. didn't do any celery. Oh, do you still want it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Does it need to be... So let's just move this off the heat. Yep. Do you want to cook it first, or is it just... Hmm? Oh, it's fine. It just needs to get chopped up. And it doesn't look like it's going to need very much. Okay. Honestly. I'm only going to use probably Here, one I'll do it. stick. Okay. So one stalk of celery. One stalk of do you, celery. How, how finely do you want it? Do you want slices, or do you want little bits? Uh, little bits. Little bits, okay. Slices would be fine, but little bits would be great. Okay. So basically what we're doing here is we're just getting everything coated up in this sauce. Part of what I like about doubling this recipe is that you're probably still going to be using a large enough pan. You can have two pie crusts ready to go, and you can bake them both at the same time. And now you've got plenty of pot pie. You're well fed. Your friends are well fed. You can do this communally. Easily, like what do you mean? Like we're doing it now. You oh. know, we're multiple people. You can have somebody who's getting the broth put together. Pot pie is great because you can say everybody bring an ingredient you like in a pot pie. We're gonna learn how to do it, and then you just need to make a roux with good flavored ingredients. And the reason we are getting away with not using more liquid here is because these vegetables are frozen. Well, except. Except if, for the celery. Except for the celery. But there's plenty of liquid in them, you see? Okay. That is going to get released as we bake. Really? Okay. All right. And if you want to measure things out exactly the right number of, of vegetables or what have you, that works just fine. But you're saying that you don't have to worry about that, really. Right. Even though we're using the oven, this is not baking chemistry. This is just... Cooking. Cooking. You're okay. just cooking. And, yeah, I mean, technically the pie crust is still that baking chemistry. But we've already mastered that now, haven't we? Are you ready for that? Yes, indeed. So now we've got everything mixed up, mixed in. We just pour it all into the pie crust. If you like to pre-bake your pie crust, it works fine to do a light pre-bake on this. But you don't have to do that. Look at this. Now It looks way too dense. Compared to what I put in mine, I've got a lot more gravy to vegetable proportion is, is quite different than what you've got there. But Something to consider is that frozen water is held in there, okay. waiting to come out. Oh, this looked that. If we had added chicken to this, this would not fit. You're totally not leaving all this sauce in this okay. pan. I'm yeah, sorry, right. but they hear me talk about this. It's one of those little, it's almost an OCD thing. It's like, if you've made the sauce, why would you leave it behind in the pan? And people do it all the time on their tiktok videos or whatever they just dump and don't scrape anything he's like why did you bother to make that much sauce if you weren't even going to use it i want it in the pie (laughs) for me it's the adhd i go okay well i'm done with this step (laughs) or i'm trying i'm trying to do the next step already my brain is there all right it's already working all right you rolled out that crust when i wasn't looking which is wonderful i did it may not be big enough i'm worried a little bit that it's going to be too small for the pie well, I've never used one of these pie bags before. Pie bag, yeah. I really like how handy this has been, though. Yeah. I just lost some over the edge. Oh, well, here, let's move it over a little bit. There we go. My partner likes this pie crust so much that if I have any extra, I've been asked to put it on a baking sheet and bake it with the pie. Like uh, little crackers? Like little crackers, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I've done that with my sweet pie crusts that I've added a little sugar to, and I just I roll them out, and I put cinnamon and sugar on them, and then I roll them up into a dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and can get away with that, that fun stuff. And it's like, hey, I made cookies, kind of. 
So we're patching the pie crust because right. it's lopped a little over one side and the other side has got holes in it. If you are more put together than I am, you can make this look beautiful with fluting and whatnot. I do actually personally like to use a fork to press this together when I can because right. it actually really helps with the crust sticking together. You know, what's interesting is that a pot pie, I took a food preservation course in my college years. And uh, what I learned was that uh, pot pie was originally just a way to preserve food. The original concept just simply being that since you don't have refrigeration, the pie crust seals it in. And you don't eat it right away. You're saving this food. You've got too much vegetable. And you are sealing in all this food with fat as well because fat prevents air and whatnot. It's basically oil covering. Well, there would have been lard or something in the crust probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm and in the sauce, and so you've preserved it. And until you cut open that pie, it will stay decently edible. Like... Uh, well, not indefinitely, obviously. Did they refrigerate... Well, oh, they would, they, not have, they would they keep have it in a cool, pies? dark place, and when you finally are ready, it's already been baked, and you would pull it out, and the crust would be stale. The crust was a lot thicker than the ones we meet today, right, right. and a lot hardier. It was meant to seal it in. You didn't really eat the crust. You just scooped the stuff. It was a container. It was a container. It was oh, an okay. edible container. It didn't hurt your food, but it kept it good. And uh, so pot pie has evolved quite a bit since then, as you can see, if you're following along with us. So I see you just poked one fork, yeah, fork can... hole in the top. I usually use a, a knife and cut several slits. Is one... We can poke in a couple of different spots. It doesn't matter too much. You just don't want it boiling over the edge if you can help it. Yeah, this is because as it steams, it'll come through the edges of your crust unless you make other places for the steam to escape. Right. Now, this is where if you have foil, you are going to put that around the edge. But happy to use the pie shield. Excited for this. Okay. Um, and of course, this is one of those situations where we're actually following the pie crust instructions, technically, where we're going to remove the cover, the foil, or whatever in the last 15 minutes of bake. Okay. And now it just goes in your preheated, very hot oven, right? It's mm -hmm. a 425 degree oven, and it's going to go in there. How long is it going to bake? So it's going to bake for 35 to 40 minutes, or until it's golden brown. So and after... the stuff bubbles through? Is that something to look for? Is it having the stuff bubble through at all? Um, I like seeing that, but it isn't the all end all. Okay. Oh, because there's like no meat or anything. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not worried in the vegetarian version. We're not worried about making sure that the meat is safe to eat, but in a meat one, we've also pre-cooked the chicken. Okay. Or whatever it is. So is there anything else we want to tell them before we go? Well, you're going to bake this up for 35 to 40 minutes, but you want to take the foil off, otherwise you will not fully cook the edges, edges of the crust. So when do you take the foil off? The 20 to 25 minute mark. Okay. Or you can just skip that. It does end up being a very browned edge if you're into that. <laughs> um, I like burned things, but I don't know about pie crust. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it that way, personally. But once you've got that baked up, pull it out carefully and let it cool. This is important. You want to let the pie cool because you're letting the sauce thicken up again. If you cut into that right away, you're going to have everything just pour right on out as opposed to stay and mingle with this crust. I should admit something with the crust. Oh, okay. Too. When you weren't looking, I threw in some extra salt. Into the crust? Into the crust. Into the crust? Into the crust. Okay. Yeah. See, I would have done that in the sauce, but not in the crust, mm -hmm. so that's interesting. Now, I think part of the reason that I like this crust so much is because you can just throw in a little salt, and it doesn't affect anything chemically. Okay. okay. You can also throw in a little garlic powder, although you have to actually throw in quite a lot for it to make a difference. Right. I like when the sauce of a pot pot mingles with the crust. It really gets... All together, I like a uh, crust when it has gotten a little soggy with the sauce after it's been okay. baked. Okay. Yeah. There's okay. something about the texture that I very much enjoy. But that's not it for everyone. That's basically it. At least let it cool to the point where you're not going to burn yourself. I know. Pot pie is probably the thing you are most likely to burn your mouth on. Because it's right. so good and you want it now. You want it now. And particularly the potatoes in there. Potatoes take a while to cool down, and I probably almost always burn my mouth on the first bite of a pot pie. Well, please don't do that to me. Okay. All right. So, 
having done this with me, would you be interested at all in maybe doing an episode by yourself sometime? I don't see why not. I've got a few more interesting recipes that I could bring along. All right. That would be fun, and it would be an interesting opportunity for me to see what somebody else might do with this podcast. <laughs> so maybe I'll let you do that. All right. Well, if you expect me to inherit this at some point, I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to Oh, I know. That. I don't know about that. All right. So that's it for today. Please go and enjoy your pot pie. If you're looking for dessert to go after it, you can, of course, find things on the cookalongpodcast.com or in your feed. Please tell a friend or a relative, perhaps one of your grown children, that you listen to this podcast. And maybe you guys can make your own vegetable pot pie together. And until next time, happy cooking. Happy cooking. Happy cooking.